Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Hey, brothers and sisters. I hope you all are enjoying this Shabbat today. We greet you. We are Hebrew Readers Church, and my name is Kasafu. Hi, my name is Dakwa. We give glory to Ahaya Ashre Ahaya, and our Dono Yache, Meshiaka, and our mother, Ruaka Kwadushi. We appreciate you all being here. We thank Ahaya for these putting your hearts to spend this time communing with us. Hope you all have been enjoying the lessons and the information that Yache has been compiling to make sure we have understanding in these end times. And today we are going to be looking at the understanding that the end is going to be like the Exodus, according to the prophecies. And if anybody is new, if this is your first time watching one of our videos, please refer back. We definitely put links in the description down below to really gain an understanding of the doctrine that we preach. If there's any names that you hear that you're not familiar with, we also have lessons on specific names as well. So definitely go back and look at the other lessons. It'll definitely help you out. Yes. All right. So the end times being like the Exodus. If you read the Hebrew records, you might have noticed that it is consistently and persistently mentioning the Exodus and how we were brought out of the land of Egypt. This constant reminder was no mere coincidence. Our fathers were commanded to teach us of the Exodus for a reason. And this is what we're going to look into today. Can we start at Psalms chapter 78, verse 1 to 5, please? All right. Psalms chapter 78, verse 1. Miss Jill of Athva, give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of Ahia and his strength and his wonderful works that he hath done. But he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he command our fathers that they should make them known to their children. So you see, it's a commandment for us to teach our children of these things. Let's see why they had to make these wonderful works known to their children as a law. Can you look at Exodus chapter 10, verse 1 to 2, please? Exodus chapter 10, verse 1. And Ahiah said to Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart and the heart of his servants, that I might show these my signs before him, and that thou mayest tell in the ears of thy son and of thy son's sons what things I have wrought in Egypt. There's the commandment. And my signs which I have done among them, that ye may know that I am Ahiah. We see the command to teach our children of the Exodus and signs are for us to know who he actually is. Let's continue in Psalm 78, verse 6 and 8, please. All right, Psalm 78 and 6. That the generation that come might know them, even the children which should be born, mm -hmm. who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in Elohim and not forget the works of Elohim, but keep his commandments. Our fathers were supposed to teach us for this reason also that we may always hope in Allah Hayyam by keeping his law, remembering that he delivered them that believed before and shall deliver the believers again. It is a sign of our faith in Allah Hayyam to keep his commandments of old. Our parents were supposed to keep telling us about all these things that happened to see where faith had taken us, how we were delivered by faith, so that we would be encouraged and always hopeful knowing that if we keep the law, we'll be delivered too, because he had done it before. Can you read Ecclesiasticus, which is the book of Sirach, chapter 15, verse 15, please? If thou wilt to keep the commandments and to perform acceptable faithfulness. And there we see, of all, it was understood that keeping the commandments is actually the performance of acceptable faithfulness. Can we go back to Psalm 78, verse 8, please? Sure. It might not be at their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation. And there we see the dichotomy. Walk in faith and believe and hope and know that keeping the law will get us saved. And then on the opposite end, we see what our parents would have been saving us from had they been teaching us the right things and making us walk as examples of believers. We would have not fallen into the stubbornness of heart and rebelliousness of our forefathers. And it gives us understanding of what we're walking in today. Because we weren't taught about the Exodus and things of that nature and what Ahayat had did. Therefore, 
we fell into the stubborn and rebellious generation. A generation that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with Elohim. This was a part of what transpired against us for our iniquities. Can you read Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 20? And he said, I will hide my face from them, and will see what their end shall be. But they are a very forward generation. Children at home has no faith. This is the generation that we were in. When we were sent out from Jerusalem, we were left. He left us to see what our end would be because we had no faith. Hence, we have a history of being destroyed all this time. Right. Because we did not walk in acceptable faithfulness by keeping his law. We were supposed to keep his law so that we don't meet the same fate as our fathers, who show that they didn't truly hope in Allah and by the fact that they didn't keep his commandments or obey his voice. It shows we trust in ourselves and what is right in our own eyes. The unbelievers of Israel perished before, before the deliverance came in the ancient times even, by trying to go to the land of Israel themselves, which is against prophecy. This is not something new that the Israelites had been walking according to their own ways and not walking in the hope of Allah by having our hearts steadfast and obeying his voice. Can you read Psalm 78, verse 9 to 11, please? Psalm 78, verse 9. The children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. This is showing the example of how the Israelites, we would trust in our strength and not trust in Allah. They kept not the covenant of Allah and refused to walk in his law. Obeying his voice is the first statute and ordinance to keep his covenant he made with us after the exodus. Hence, if we don't do what he says, we are covenant breakers. You can look at Exodus chapter 19, verse 5, and Exodus chapter 15, verse 25 to 26, to see the initial covenant, the initial ordinance and statute was to obey his voice. Hence, it says in Psalm 78, verse 10, that they kept not the covenant of Allah because there was a promise made with our fathers, and also a promise made with us to obey his voice. He had promised he would uh, deliver us after 400 years in Genesis to Abraham, Genesis 15 verse 13. And the children of Ephraim erred in the scriptures through pride and trusting right. in themselves and decided they were going to go into the land ahead of time. In verse 11. And forgot his works and his wonders that he had showed them. These things that were supposed to be for us to believe, they put behind them and walked according to what looked right in their own sight. Sadly, not all Israel came out of Egypt in the deliverance of Exodus through transgression. Just as not all Israel will leave or be delivered from the hand of the enemy in the end times through transgression. In the Exodus, the unbelievers also perished for not obeying prophecy when the Exodus deliverance was about to come because they didn't believe Allah and obey his voice. And sadly, they did not obey the two witnesses that Ahiah sent unto them. Can we go back to Psalm 78 verse 12? And then we want to jump to verse 42 and 43, of course. You can take the time and read the whole Psalms at your leisure. Psalm 78 and 12. Marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers. In the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan, verse 42. They remember not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. The hand is Yache, the arm of Ahayah, according to Isaiah 53. It was Yache who he forgot when he said they remembered not his hand. Because it was him that came down to deliver us from Egypt. And to further confirm that it was Yahche, First Corinthians chapter 10 goes into who was that leading us. So right, that verse rock. 1 to 4. Mm -hmm. Can you read verse 43, please, of Psalm 78? How he had wrought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zoan. Now, we see how signs and wonders showed how that the Allahim of the Hebrews is Ahai in Exodus chapter 10, verse 1 and 2. And we saw how in Psalm 78 it mentions signs and wonders. These are keys to understand what's to come. Because even so shall the signs and wonders be done on the world and the land of Egypt, that we may know he is Ahaya in the end of this world, just like the Exodus. The signs and wonders are prophesied to come in these end times as well. Can you read 2 Ezra chapter 9, verse 1 to 7, please? 2 Ezra chapter 9, verse 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself, and when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then thou shalt understand that it is the very same time. 
wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of people in the world, then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as all that is made in the world hath a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest. Even so, the time also of the highest hath plain beginnings and wonder and powerful works, and endings and effects and signs. It's the same with those plagues and different things happen. There are going to be signs and wonders and powerful works that happen in these end times. The end shall be just like the Exodus according to the prophecy. And let's hear about it in 2nd Ezra chapter 15, verse 1 to 12, please. 2nd Ezra chapter 15, verse 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith Ahiah. Cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. The incredulity is a state of being unwilling or unable to believe something. Ahaya knew that there would be people who would not be able to believe the truth. He said, fear not the imaginations against thee, because people are going to walk according to their own mind. Right. It's prophetic. Some people are not going to believe, but don't fear it. We have to continue walking in the right path. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. People are also going to speak against it with their own doctrines or their own perspectives and feelings, which they are entitled to have. We have to continue going according to the truth of the gospel, to the law and the testimony, to the faith in Yahweh's name, bearing the fruits of the Spirit, regardless of what is around us, because we have to abide in faith. And why do we have to abide in faith? What does the next verse say? For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. Everyone will receive their reward. If we perform acceptable faithfulness, we shall be saved. Because that's why Allah sent his son into the world, that whosoever believeth on him shall have everlasting life, as John 3 and 16 said. Continue, please. Behold, saith Ahaya, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. For wickedness have exceedingly polluted the whole earth. And their hurtful works are fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Therefore saith Ahiah, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit. Neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold the innocent and righteous blood crieth unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. And therefore saith Ahiah, I will surely avenge them, and receive unto me all the innocent blood from among them, Behold, my people are led as a flock to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. This lets you know that it was prophetic that we would be back in the land of Egypt in the end times. Because this prophecy that Ezra has been told to speak of is what's coming in the end. Right. And he's foretelling, I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. This shows Ahia is guiding us to the right path because Egypt is one of the places of Isaiah 11 and 11 which ties us into being among the five cities of Egypt, as Isaiah chapter 19, verse 18 said. Now, this is all prophecy lining up according to the spirit of prophecy, which is Yahche. But I will bring them with a mighty hand and the stretched out arm. So he's sending Yahche again, because we know that's how he delivered us before. And smite Egypt with plagues as before. That's the key word. He said, as before. Right. He's going to do it again. He's going to send two witnesses. Yachi is going to do what he's going to do. Again, this is what's coming. Continue. And will destroy all the land thereof. The prophecies are consistent. We just heard Ahaya testify he's going to bring them out as before to Ezra. We need two or three witnesses for a thing to be established, right? Right. right. Do things lawfully. <laughs> uh, look at Hosea chapter 2, verse 14 to 16, please. Hosea chapter 2, verse 14. Therefore, behold, I will allure her, and bring her into the wilderness, and speak comfortably unto her. And I will give her her vineyards from thence, and the valley of Achor for a door of hope. And she shall sing there, as in the days of her youth, and as in the days when she came up out of the land of Egypt. He just said, as in the days when she came up out of the land of Egypt. And again, we're seeing the scripture telling it's going to be like it was in Egypt. And it shall be in that day, saith Ahiah, that thou shalt call me Ishi, 
and no more barley. Can we also look at Micah chapter 7? Sure, Micah chapter 7 verse 15. According to the days of thy coming, out of the land of Egypt will I show unto him marvelous things. There we see again, three different prophets showing the same thing. It's going to be like the Exodus. Uh, continue. The nations will see and be confounded at all their might. The same way the Egyptians were confounded, seeing what Ahiah had done. Continue. They shall lay their hand upon... <laughs> we have rejoicing. Right. <laughs> Deliverance is coming. The child is rejoicing. <laughs> <laughs> they shall lay their hand upon their mouth, their ears shall be deaf. They shall lick the dust like a serpent. They shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth. They shall be afraid of Ahiah Elohim. So you see how these signs Ahiah he has these two witnesses doing when you read Revelations chapter 11 verse 2 to about verse 9. It talks about how the witnesses are going to be doing miracles and nobody shall hurt them. Right. And then after they preach the gospel, you have the nation celebrating as they're killing off these two prophets because these two prophets tormented them. And you can see how the nations are going to be afraid of Ahiah when they see the miracles that he's doing, seeing what he's bringing upon the world. They shall be afraid of Ahiah and shall fear because of thee. Zechariah chapter 10, verse 6 leads. Zechariah chapter 10, verse 6. And I will strengthen the house of Judah. And I will save the house of Joseph, and I will bring them again to place them, for I have mercy upon them. And they shall be as though I had not cast them off, for I am Ahiah, their Elohim, and will hear them. I will bring them again also out of the land of Egypt. Can you read that again, please? <laughs> I will bring them again also out of the land of Egypt. Again, the scriptures are consistent. It's going to be like the Exodus. I will bring them again also out of the land of Egypt and gather them out of Assyria. These are places of Isaiah 11 and 11. Letting us know Ahiah's guiding us the right way to go to the right places. And I will bring them into the land of Gilead and Lebanon, and place shall not be found for them. So we had Ezra. Ahiah said it in Ezra. He showed it in Hosea. He showed it in Micah. And he showed it in Zechariah. There's four different prophets that all were shown the same deliverance that was going to come from these areas and letting us know that this deliverance is coming in the end like the Exodus. He will even split the waters of the Egyptian sea for the people according to Isaiah chapter 11 verse 15 and 16. We can read that please. Isaiah chapter 11 verse 15. And the highest shall utterly destroy the tongue of the Egyptian sea. And with his mighty wind shall he shake his hand over the river, and shall smite it in the seven streams, right. and make men go over dry shot. And there shall be a highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria, uh -huh. like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. Again, like as it was to Israel in the day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. The scriptures are consistent. That's a fifth prophet now. Isaiah also see it. That is going to be like the Exodus. That's why he had our fathers keep saying it. Tell your children. Tell your children about the Exodus. So that they may know Ahiah. That they may know Ahiah. Because this is what is coming here in the end. The two witnesses of Revelation chapter 11 verse 3 shall be sent. Just like two witnesses of the southern kingdom were sent in the Exodus. Can we read Psalms chapter 105, verse 26 and 27, please? Oops. Psalms 105, verse 26. He sent Moses his servant and Aaron, whom he had chosen. They showed his signs among them and wonders in the land of Ham. Zahiah said the end shall be in effects and signs, but the two witnesses will be doing signs and wonders too. Can you read Revelations 11, verse 3, please? Sure. And I will give power unto my two witnesses. And they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days clothed in sackcloth. Just as he said he'll give power unto his two witnesses, he was with Moses and Aaron when he had sent them too. We can read Exodus chapter 3 verse 10 and 11 and then chapter 4 verse 12 to 17, please. Exodus chapter 3 verse 10. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto Elohim, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Exodus chapter 4, verse 12. Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, 
and teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, O my Adonai, sin, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. And the anger of Ahiah was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well, and also, behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him, and put words in his mouth, and I will be with thy mouth, and with his mouth. And I will teach you what ye shall do, and he shall be thy spokesman unto the people. And he shall be, even he shall be to thee instead of a mouth, and thou shalt be to him instead of an Elohim. And thou shalt take this rod in thy hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. Can you read Exodus 7 and 2, please? Sure. Thou shalt speak all that I command thee, and Aaron thy brother shall speak unto Pharaoh, that he send the children of Israel out of his land. This is why the land of Egypt shall be afraid of the southern kingdom in the end times, just like in the Exodus when the Egyptians feared the Hebrews, because Yahche will plague Egypt by the two witnesses in these end times too. Uh, can you read Psalms 105, verse 38, please? Sure. Egypt was glad when they departed, for the fear of them fell upon them. So we see the fear of the Israelites fell upon the Egyptians, right? Can you read Revelations chapter 11, verse 6, please? These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. Uh, you can see what would cause the Egyptians to be afraid here in the end times, seeing that the two witnesses would be doing these things through Yahweh's power, even as Moses and Aaron had afflicted the land of Egypt. Now, it helps understand Isaiah chapter 19, verse 17 and verse 20 to see why the Egyptians will be afraid of Judah, which is men of the southern kingdom. Can you read that, please? Isaiah chapter 19, verse 17. And the land of Judah shall be a terror unto Egypt. Every one that maketh mention thereof shall be afraid of himself, because the counsel of Ahiah of hosts, which he hath determined against it. Verse 20. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto Ahiah of hosts in the land of Egypt. For they shall cry unto Ahiah because of the oppressors, and he shall send them a savior and a great one, and he shall deliver them. The deliverance shall come in the end times from the Savior, Yahweh, just like it did in the Exodus. Here we are, literally in the ends of the world, and Ahiah has been gracious. What was it, over five prophets that Ahiah left on the standard for us to know that the end shall be like the Exodus? Right. Let's look at Jeremiah to see that there were nations who didn't know his, or hear his fame before, but in these end times all will know. Jeremiah chapter 16. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Ahiah that it shall no more be said, Ahiah liveth, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But Ahiah liveth, that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north, and from all the lands, whether he had driven them. And I will bring them again into their land, that I gave unto their fathers. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith Ahiah, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain, and from every hill, and out of the holes of the rocks. For my eyes are upon all their ways. They are not hid from my face, neither is their iniquity hid from my eyes. And this lets us know, children and Israel, we can't get away. Right. And first I will recompense their iniquity and their sin double. So first we're going to be purged and rewarded according to our sins. Because they have defiled my land. They have filled mine inheritance with the carcasses of their detestable and abominable things. O oh, I am my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction. The Gentiles shall come unto thee from the ends of the earth, and shall say, Surely our fathers have inherited lives. Vanity and things wherein is no profit. This is when the whole world is going to wake up and realize that Ahia is Ahia. Can you also read Jeremiah chapter 23? Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Ahiah, that they shall no more say, Ahiah liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. Now, we know the end is going to be like the Exodus, and now seeing that he's gathering from everywhere, we see why we're not going to be saying in these times, Ahiah liveth, that brought us up out of the land of Egypt. Right. The saying is going to change because he's going to do it on the world stage now. Okay, But Ahiah liveth, 
which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, and from all the countries whither I have driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. So, according to the scripture, we see that the end is going to be like the Exodus, right? Okay. Now, some people might say, what about Matthew 24? That he said that the end shall be at the days of Noah, all right? Let me go to it so I can read it for you. Matthew 24 and 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. It's as it says. Right. People are going to continue with their lives all the way up onto the end. That's how it was in the days of Noah. They literally were doing whatever they wanted to do, and then all of a sudden it started raining. And they came banging on the boat, asking Noah to let them in. But it was too late. And that's what he was explaining. He indeed explains what he means right after. It's going to be people who are, before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving marriage. Because there are people who receive the mark of the beast that are going to be continuing their lives. Right. Continue doing what they want to do. They're going to be getting afflicted. The people were getting afflicted during the time of Noah too. Right. And they still wouldn't repent. Right. And the revelations testifies that people are going to be afflicted and they're still not going to repent as well. Right. So you can see how, yeah, it's going to be like in days of Noah. People are going to continue doing what they want all the way up until the coming of Yahweh. As he clearly said, they uh, were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them away, so also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Literally, Yahweh is going to be coming, and people as then they're going to try and run and get under the rock, saying, cover us, cover us, for the day of Ahia has come. Right. People are literally going to be doing whatever they want all the way up to the end. What Yahweh is referring to right here, he was talking about the very end of the world. He was talking about more so the last three days of the world, actually. You're right. Because this was the coming of the Son of Man. So to be in proper context, he was talking about this specific part is actually talking about the last three days of this world. And it well supports what it says, verse 40. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken and the other left. Right. Because when he's coming, his people are going to be brought up to him. Right. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken and the other left. This is when people are going to begin taking up, right. when Yahweh is actually coming. And then he said, watch therefore, for you know not what hour you are done or coming. That day is going to be an uh, interesting day. You don't know the hour. Stay on God. So he comes like a thief in the night. All right. You got anything else? I feel like we had a lot already, huh? Yeah, it was a lot. It was all good, Dodge. It was good. Good food. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Right. Well, y'all always can pause the lesson <laughs> and, and stop it, get what you need, write it down, and keep it going, you know. So, you know, we just want to make sure everybody has the information. So, I have your praise. Yeah.